Good morning, dear students. Uh, welcome to the session on continuous beams with the simple and Baikani method. So, if you, if you see the change in the procedure uh, with the case of uh, continuous beam with fixed end and now the continuous beam with simple end, what are all the changes that are to be made in the procedure? In the basic procedure that is being discussed in the last session uh, for solving continuous beam with fixed ends so you have to change the stiffness value k of a particular uh, member so if the far end of the member that is b if you take a b so if the far end is B, so if the end B is hinge instead of fixed, so you have to change the stiffness value from 4 EI by L to 3 EI by L. So this is one uh, change that is to be made. So uh, where do you uh, encounter this uh, value in your procedure? So while calculating, rotation factor uh, you have to uh, change this k value right so remember only when uh, far end of the member is hinged uh, you have to change the stiffness value right then what are all other uh, modifications so you have to modify the moments at the hinge end where you have uh, end hinge in the continuous beam so if you are modifying the moment uh, at b like so if the b is hinge so you have to make that moment as zero because you have a fixed end moment value already calculated so to make it zero you have to add same value with opposite sign okay so that value, whatever you added, will carry to end A as carryover moment half the value because uh, the far end is fixed or else continuous. Okay, so this is the change in the moments. <clears throat> okay, so which means balance the hinge end and carry half the moment to the far end from the hinge. Okay so this is uh, the modification so you have to calculate modified moments and then go for the rest of the procedure is similar okay so uh, there are three things overall uh, one is stiffness is changing then you are going to balance the hinge end to make it zero and then half the value shall be carried to uh, the far end okay whatever value you are adding for uh, making it uh, zero moment to be made zero okay right so we will see one example uh, with that you will have uh, the modifications made in the procedure you, you you have the clear idea about that okay so take this one and i'll analyze the continuous beam shown by Kanis method so A, B is 4 meter span and B, C is also same, C, D, same span. A, B has got a central point load of 50 kilo newton. It's of uh, 2 meter uh, distance from B and B, C has got U, D, L and C, D has got again same central point load of 50 kilo newton. So as a first step, uh, we don't have any uh, change in the step one now you have to observe that d is not a fixed support now so d is a hinge so let us see what are all uh, changes that are to be made right so as usual we will find fixed end moments for span a b and span b c and span c d okay so this is for span a b central point load we use the formula of p l by 8 for fixed end moment with a central point load and for span b c you have u d l we use w l square by 12 
to calculate the value and uh, when you take bc and b has got a negative moment which means anti clockwise and and c has got positive value which is clockwise same as eab also so at a it is negative and at b it is positive same values for cd because same span and same load okay now coming to the modified moments okay so d shall have zero moment okay so i take this moment at d that means this value so you have plus 25 so to make it zero i am adding minus 25 value so that it is zero so now because of adding a moment at d moment at c also changes so what shall i do i have to take half the value to c okay so that is already c has got a value of minus 25 c moment at c is already minus 25 this is already there also half of minus 25 so minus 25 by 2 will come and add with this so finally it will become minus 37.5 so now you have to use the modified values instead of these earlier calculated fixed moment values so now modified values are 30 minus 37.5 and 0 okay remaining four values you have to use same values <coughs> right now coming to rotation factor values so the rest of the procedure same the only change is whenever you have uh, far end is a hinge then you have to change the stiffness value to 3 ei by l so joint c has got no issue joint b has got no issue uh, whereas b a if you take a is far end is fixed b c if you see c is continuous so both have got 4 a by l now when you come to joint c joint c so c b b is continuous we'll have 4 a by l c d d is a hinge so for this case you will be using 3 ea by l because d is a hinge okay now rest of the calculation is similar uh, we will uh, calculate total joint stiffness value and k divided by sigma k into minus 1.5 uh, minus 1 by 2 which means minus 0 0.5 will give you this value and similarly k divided by sigma k into minus 1 by 2 will give you this one so likewise at giant c these two values okay this is how we calculate rotation factor so minus 1 by 2 k divided by sigma k values okay right now let us start the third step that is finding rotation contributions for the members at joint okay so joints are two here b and c rest of the beam you draw as it is only joints replace them by boxes as said earlier so right fixed end moments and now you can see m f c d is modified m f d c is modified so these two are modified moments okay now uh, write uh, these uh, rotation factor values from table 2 
I mean, step two in table uh, and calculate total moment at B that is 25 is there minus 26.67 is there total value and 26.67 minus 37.5 total value right now coming to cycle one uh, joint b first m dash b a so there are two members b a b c so rotation factor multiplied by this fixed end moment plus far end m dash values rotation contributions as there is no value available we will have zero substitution so take zero first if you don't have a value so that comes to 0 0.4 that we will write it here then bc just factor change so even there is no factor change so it, it will be same okay now coming to giant c similar way rotation factor multiplied by the fixed end moment total and then far ends for c is c b now uh, value available at b so we take 0.42 and rotation contribution at d zero so that is coming to be 2.98 substituted here then m dash c d just factor change remaining is same so 2.23 so these are all uh, the rotation contribution values at the joints same way go for joint uh, b again and go for finding m dash b a same as m dash b c c b c d okay so this cycle two values in a similar fashion so we write the uh, rotation factor sum of fixed end moments okay joint b you are writing so far end contribution far end from b to a value is zero b to c there is a value of 2.98 so that you substitute and you get this value okay so likewise all these values are to be found okay cycle two next cycle three in a similar fashion you find these values by the similar procedure the similar formula is rotation factor multiplied by sum of fixed end moment at a joint and then far end contributions from b to a contribution b to c contribution 3.24 that will give you minus 0.39 is the value in cycle 3 same way other member and joint c 3.25 and joint c other member 2.36 so cycle three values similarly cycle four values okay these are all cycle four values okay right uh, next week we have once you you feel that they are stabilized you see and minus 0.39 and minus 0.4 is like 0 0.01 is the difference and same 0 0.01 same 0 0.01 and it is almost zero okay so finally we need final end moments so we'll have a tabular form for this uh, all the nodes in the beam you write them and see that the columns have got divided like this to the left of a you draw a vertical line under b exactly at the middle of b you draw a line vertical line under c vertical line after d vertical line 
then you have rows for fixed end moment one row and two times near end rotation contribution you have a row values far end rotation contribution then final end moment so fixed end moments you have them over the beam you just transfer these values onto the table 25 minus 25 plus 25 and this minus 37.5 and 0 transfer these values okay then two times near end contributions so a m dash value 0 so two times 0 and that b minus 0.48 uh, minus 0 0.4 into 2 will be minus 0.8 same here and 3.26 into 2 6.52 and 2.36 into 2 4.72 and 0 into 2 0 then far end contributions so 0 0.4 must be taken to a and 0 must be taken to b so minus 0.4 0 interchange the values same here these two values are to be interchanged for end contributions so 3.26 here minus 0.4 here and also these two shall be interchanged but this value should not go to d because d is a hinge so for end contribution from c even though you interchange 2.36 half of this value shall not go to here so it will be zero okay so don't write 2.36 here so that uh, all the values have been posted and calculate final end moment by adding all these values okay adding all these values likewise so you will see minus 25.4 is the final moment at a and at B 24.2 and minus 24.2, C 32.79 minus 32.78. You have an error of 0.01. So not an issue. D moment is zero because it is a hinge. Okay. So this is how we handle a case of continuous beam with hinge end. Okay. Right. So take this uh, question uh, from May 19, JNT UK, and uh, take it as assignment question. Practice just like uh, what you have seen now, because it is also a case of hinge end. Okay. So just analyze the continuous beam shown in figure using Connie's method. So given for seven marks, right? So next, uh, uh, in the next session, we will take up the other case where uh, the continuous beam having overhangs, right? Thank you.